Hey, uh, how do you feel about some high rarity cards, or maybe some foreign ones, or maybe be ahead of the game with others by preparing for future set releases with very quick shipping? Uh, check out EJ Gaming and use code British Five on checkout for five percent off on all your orders. Link in the description. Greetings, duelists, and welcome to another video. So, as you can see here on the screen, uh, there are three duels that I did on the last hour. I did it while I was testing a deck, and you can see that I have three wins uh, immediately in the past hour and I kind of want to talk about it um, so the deck that I'm piloting and testing at the moment uh, is pretty much Snake Eye Fire King so earlier uh, like last video I did a video um, an explanation on Fire Kings as a concept the things that you kind of want to do in the deck and like a few engines that you should be playing or considering in in the deck uh, as a whole and like overall uh, general idea of think figuring out if the deck is viable for this uh, format before Phantom Nightmare uh, it comes to no surprise that Phantom Nightmare is going to be a game-changing set is going to be a set that is going to highly bolster the Fire King strategy and as well as few other themes. However, after playing the deck and playing my three duels, I kind of figured out that this deck can be a little bit more aggressive uh, than I initially thought. And I kind of want to talk about it. Um, so, in this uh, lineup that you see right here uh, You're going to see there are Ratios that are pretty much not normal for other Fire King builds uh, Not many builds are maxing out on Ponyx. Not many builds are maxing out on Garunix either uh, I think the two Sanctuary to Island ratio I think is um, Correct. I don't think there's an incorrect ratio in, in here you also notice that there's only one Black Witch and the three Wanteds. In this particular version, the Sinful Spells engine is a lot more stronger than in other decks where this engine could be played. And the main reason for that is because of the Snake Eyes. Uh, if you guys have been tuning into this channel, I already did a video talking about Snake Eyes as a concept and how strong the cards are if you manage to resolve them in rotation. Prior to Phantom Nightmare, not many people are looking into Snake Eyes because the one card that they're missing that really like folds the deck together and pretty much makes this engine with the sinful spoils cards a lot more explosive is a card that is going to be released uh, later, which is the Populous. However, I've noticed after playing the deck that, you know, this theme is perfectly fine on its own at the moment with the current cards that we have. Uh, so, the other Ornorthodox thing that I'm playing in this deck, and it's not a card that I think many people should be playing in their list. However, I have been testing it and I actually been li have been liking it to so far. Uh, it's rekindling So for those who don't know rekindling is basically soul charge for 200 defense monsters and we have a couple of them in this deck um, Arvada, Barong, Rangbali, Jaksha, Kirin, Snake Eye Oak uh, the, uh, the legendary Ponyx uh, All these are monsters with 200 defense and there are no restrictions from rekindling except that the monsters have to be banished during the end phase which is not really an issue in this deck considering the really like generic extra deck that we have we pretty much just we can just link away the monsters for free uh, this card helps with OTKs it helps with the mid to late game it helps with the grind game a lot uh, it helps push through hand traps as well like in an off chance you get Nibiru or you just get like hand trapped to oblivion 
and you just want to keep like siphoning your place this card is very very strong for that uh, you notice there's no prosperity in this build uh, I so far in testing I haven't found any consistency issue the real bricks in this deck would probably be the Beast Warriors right here which is why I'm not playing Fire Formation Tanky uh, I'm playing multiple Barongs because I feel like uh, there will be a time and a place where you get not into your resources enough and just making sure you have a spare barong in your like main deck yeah just helps circumvent that and makes it so your engine can keep rolling if somehow there's it stopped in its track um one way or another so the other thing to notice is that barong searching for a fire king card uh is not a hard once per turn meaning that if you end up popping both copies of barong you will get both barong effects in your next standby phase which is something very very strong like it could help it, it, it's pretty much a big difference between like a make it or break it situation so now that we talked about a few of the new cards that I've been playing and a few of the additions that I made to the deck, originally I was going to like uh, showcase uh, a Tri Brigade version. However, I've been liking this version a lot, and I think the list is still not perfect. There's still a lot of things that you can do uh, to perfect this deck, but as of as of right now i actually have been liking it a lot so now what i'm going to do is showcase you uh a hand that i had and a lot of things you can do with this hand right here what makes this hand really really powerful is the uh seeker of simple spoils uh i do forgive everybody who's watching this video who like kind of wanted to see this as a budget profile uh, you can still play this as a budget uh, version. What I would be doing is replacing the copies of Wanted for the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes. And you'll see in a moment exactly what I mean by that. Uh, pretty much, uh, I do Wanted for the Witch. I do Wish, dump the Rambali, and I set the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. And now we're going to add a normal Ponyx and we're going to do the Fire King rotation. We pop the Ponyx, we summon Garunix. I mean, we add Garunix, we summon Garunix, we pop the Baron. And now that we used our Ponyx, you're probably thinking, what can we do with the original Sinful Spoils? Well, uh, the thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to summon Ash. And the Ash is going to add us another Ponyx. Uh, this is the reason why playing multiple Ponyx is important. Is because uh, if you do get to rotate into your uh, Snake Eye cards, you can pretty much just add an immediate follow-up that you can use on, like, on the following turns without having to rely on Ponyx and Baron resolving to grab themselves back to your hand. Another thing to note is that you can just pop for Kirin and you can keep extending in the off chance that you actually get stopped uh, by something like Nibiru. Uh, I'm going to fix the rotation. I'm going to be sending uh, Oak to the graveyard. However, uh, one of the things that we do after we use the Snake Eye Ash effect to add is use the Ash effect to summon the Flamber's Dragon. And this is the reason why the Fire King Snake Eye deck is really, really strong. This is the linchpin of that strategy. Uh, essentially, what this card is going to be doing is going to give you free bodies that you're just going to keep cycling. And pre Phantom Nightmare, this is pretty much like one of the engines that you're going to be going for. Uh, basically, we used Kirin to plot the flam Flamberge, we brought back uh, two of the Snake Eyes. And now we linked into Sunlight Wolf and then we linked into Link Karibo. Uh, the Sunlight Wolf triggers because the Link Karibo has been summoned next to it. And that's going to grab us the Flamberge Dragon. The reason we're grabbing Flamberge Dragon is because 
the Baron is going to resolve next turn and that's going to grab us the Kirin. And so now we do Heat Soul, Heat Soul will draw us a card and we actually drew into the Kirin which is funny. Now we're going to be simulating what happens in the standby phase. In the standby phase we trigger Barong and we trigger the Ponyx. Uh, Ponyx goes back to our hand and the uh, And the Baron is going to search us for Arvata. The reason we're searching for Arvata uh, specifically is because we already have Kirin in our hand. Otherwise, you would be grabbing Kirin here. So now, uh, what we can be, what we can do uh, on our opponent's main phase, we can pop the Kirin. I mean, we can summon the Kirin by popping the Flamber's Dragon. And this is going to create a really strong uh, chain reaction. Basically, a lot of cards get to be triggered here uh, because of one interaction that we did, which is this one. This is very similar to Labyrinth and how the furnishers all activate in the graveyard, uh, like when a monster leaves by a trap card effect. And if you've seen my Unchained version of Labyrinth, you know that Escape of the Unchained creates a super massive chain link that just triggers all your Unchained cards and all your Labyrinth cards. This is something very, very similar to that. Because we popped the Flamberge Dragon with the Kirin, we get to trigger Ponyx, Arvata, we get to trigger the Flamberge Dragon, and we get to trigger Garunix. And that's a super massive chain link. This deck pretty much uh, like becomes another version of Unchained, like once stuff like this is happening. So, as you can see here, I'm creating the chain links. Uh, I didn't summon the Garunix here, uh, however, like, Garunix is another option that you can be summoning. Another thing that you can do also is not trigger the Ponyx effect, and instead just trigger the Snake Eye Oak, and use the Oak effect to just bring back the Ponyx. Um, so, pretty much there's a lot of things that we can do here. Uh, if your opponent tries to react with a monster effect, you can use Arvata, and Arvata can just pop one of these monsters, which will then just pop the Garunix, which will then make it so we can pop like another Kirin, for example, and then the Kirin can just like trigger to special Baron and then pop a card, and you know, so on and so forth, or bring back Rambali to have a spell trap negate. And this is pretty much what I just wanted to talk about. Uh, I just wanted to showcase you that all of this is possible on your opponent's turn. You just fill up your board entirely and you get more very massive card advantage. Once the Phantom Nightmare arrives and we get the, the Populace, we're going to have this combo that you see right here be a lot more consistent is going to be happening a lot more often which means your opponent has a lot to think about uh when it comes to like how to deal with uh, the supplementary monsters and bodies that you're making in this deck but yeah i pretty much just wanted to showcase you that uh Again, this is a very experimental build. If you want a more budget option, as I mentioned earlier, you can cut the Snake Eye, I mean the Sinful Spoils engine. And what I would do to replace that is just play a little bit more of the Snake Eye cards. Probably like max out the copies of Snake Eye, maybe play the Snake Eye's field spell. Uh, that would be in like another example. Uh, there, another example would be probably playing more than one Flamberge Dragon. One, one really cool thing about the original Sinful Spoils is that its effect to add a level 1 fire requires to you returning a Snake Eye or a Diabell Star Monster. It doesn't have to be the Dark Wish, you can just return one of the Snake Eye cards and that will make it so you get your extra monster. Uh, as far as non-engine, I'm pretty much playing Imperm, Talent, and Ash right now. The, uh, since we're not playing Prosperity, you can pretty much uh, benefit from the draw effect of this card, as well as the other two effects. Imperm is just one of the uh, really good hand trap, like in general, and 
Ash serves an extra purpose in this deck because it is a fire monster, meaning that you can pop it with Kirin, you can use it for protection of Sanctuary into the Fire King Island, which I have done that. If uh, ready, Let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, Dueling Book Adventures. Uh, one of the three duels that I had right here was against Manadium, and one of the key plays that I did to win the game was uh, using the Sanctuary effect to pop Ash from my hand to just protect the Fire King Island. So that's pretty much uh, all we can say uh, for this uh, deck and this variant. I think this extra deck is pretty much perfect. Uh, like, shoutouts to one Yugi tuber. Um, I don't remember their name right now, but I will post their deck profile in the comments. Uh, they did a uh, Fire King uh, deck profile that won them a uh, mat, and this was the extra that they were playing, and I think it's pretty much almost perfect, at least until Phantom Nightmare arrives. But yeah, uh, that's it uh, from me. I hope you found this video informative. I hope you found it to your liking and understanding. By the time of this recording, uh, YCS Bologna should be starting very soon. And I feel like if somebody has figured out this formula by now, they have a very, very strong shot of like m even making it to top cut. Because I do really think this deck is not on a league of its own however like with the proper matchups and the proper interactions and player knowledge it can actually do very well uh in this current format before 2024. another thing to note is we might get a ban list uh very very soon and if konami addresses like other decks in the format uh there is a very strong possibility that Fire Kings will just going to be a top meta contender. Alright, uh, that's it from me. Uh, I'm already rambling and like repeating myself. So keep practicing and keep doing.